Good morning. So we're here today to talk about the Project Specific Safety Plan, or PSSP. So this is a document that the safety team has developed. It is basically an amalgamation of our safety manual with uh, our safety board, so all the safety documentation that's posted in the site trailers, we have made into one document. It is needed to manage site-specific risks, to protect personnel from physical and health hazards associated with the specific location of sites, and to protect the environment while executing the project. Moving forward, we will require PSSPs to be, to be developed anytime Wright Construction is the prime contractor, and we would like these PSSPs um, to be started prior to the project breaking ground, um, but then they will need to be updated whenever major changes occur. All required controls must be completed and communicated to workers prior to starting work in the field and must be signed off by project management, supervisory personnel, and subcontractors working within this plan. Um, so it's important that we're obtaining all the necessary signatures on this plan um, throughout the various stages and that workers are aware of where this PSSP is in the site trailer, it should be posted right on your safety board, and uh, they should be aware of what it is. So as I said, it's basically a condensed version of our safety manual, but it is site specific. Um, it will ensure that all aspects of a project safety plan are completed and that nothing is missed, as um, all the safety documentation that needs to be completed is all condensed into this one document. It can also help to, to prove the due diligence of right construction in doing everything reasonably practicable to maintain a safe work site and to prevent occupational injuries and illnesses. So I'm just gonna take you through the document here so that um, you have an idea of what it looks like and how to fill it out. So this is the title page. Um, it asks for the title of the project and the project number. Um, I have a sample project photo here and uh, that you can just include in the middle and then the name of the project and the street address. So here's the table of contents. Um, so, oh, did I skip one? Nope. So here's the table of contents. Um, so we basically um, just want everything to be easily accessible for workers, so it's all laid out here. Um, but for the table of contents, you won't uh, necessarily have to include every single section in your PSSP because we would like them to be as site-specific as possible. So if something doesn't apply to your project, um, you can cut it out. Just make sure that the table of contents is being updated to portray those changes. For the introduction, this is basically your emergency contact list. So just at the bottom here for emergency numbers, um, just make sure that it is specific to your location. Um, if you're in BC, obviously you're not gonna have SAS power and SAS energy. Those numbers will be different depending on where your project's taking place. Um, so we have listed here the scope of work, which, which can just be a really um, quick summary of your project, site location and identification, the project schedule. Um, we have permits listed here. You can just check them off as you are obtaining them and uh, room for other permits as well. Down here, we have the plan approval. So just as I said before, make sure that everybody is signing off. And you'll see throughout this document, there's a lot of space for comments and project team comments. Um, these don't necessarily have to be filled out every time. They kind of are just an opportunity for the project team to, ex to um, write down any other pertinent information that may be uh, relevant. So we have here the HSE management system overview and policies. So all of the documents listed here are for reference um, and they are in our safety manual. So uh, we just want all of these policies to be noted and to be easily accessible for workers 
So if they're looking through this PSSP and need to find a certain policy, they know exactly where to look in our safety manual. And again, the comments are there if more information is required, but they don't necessarily have to be filled out. We have here our roles and responsibilities. So um, no changes should be required. You can leave all of this as is. More roles and responsibilities for reference. Uh, listed here are the general site rules. Um, so those probably won't require any changes, but underneath we have the site specific rules. So that's where uh, if there are any rules specified by the client that they want to be implemented on site, they can be listed here. Um, also, site specific rules could be required due to the nature of the work. So if uh, there's additional PPE that's required on site, that can be listed. If workers aren't permitted to park on site, um, again, that can be listed under site specific rules. So here we have the prime contractor policy, no changes are required there. For hazard assessment and risk mitigation, so here are some supplementary documents that will be completed um, in conjunction with this PSSP just to ensure that um, we're identifying hazards and implementing controls. So the GRHA or Group Risk Hazard Assessment it will be completed by PMs with the assistance from site supervisors. And basically it breaks down every task that will be completed on site and it um, assigns a risk um, rating for that task. Um, so that will be a comprehensive document that we will be that we need to be completing every time Wright Construction is the prime contractor. For field level hazard assessments or FLHAs, obviously we already have workers completing those daily on site and reviewing them at breaks um, and supervisors signing off. For 2.3 site fall protection information and requirements, so this will involve tasks that require working from heights, it will involve equipment requirements, training of workers, uh, your daily fall protection plans, your site fall protection plans, etc. For protection of the public, this will include uh, the required signage, if you require flag persons, road closures, uh, basically any communication with the public that is required in order to keep them safe around our job. For subcontractor and material management, again, we have all of the supplementary um, reference documents here from our safety manual. We have listed here the environmental policy and plan, so no changes should be required there. For 3.2 um, WMIS, we, uh, we need to ensure that on site all SDS binders are site specific. So in the SDS binder, which should be readily accessible for workers in the site trailer, um, all of the SDS sheets in that binder have to um, include all the hazardous materials that you have on site, and there shouldn't be any SDS sheets in there that um, are for hazardous materials that are not kept on site. So just keep that in mind. Uh, also, the safety team has been working on a women's refresher course for workers. Um, and we will be rolling that out shortly just so that workers are uh, refreshed on how to read these SDS sheets and um, how to properly handle hazardous materials. For communication, again, supplementary safety manual documents are listed here. Um, for 4.1.1 project specific orientation plan and requirements, so we do require all workers and visitors on site to receive our right construction uh, company orientation as well as a site specific orientation. Um, the client may require further orientation requirements, um, so those can all be listed in that section as well. For the sample HSE posting board, so this is um, our current safety board. We have the template banners. Um, so you can list um, 
typically these are all of the documents that are 